Hi everyone and welcome back to Fandom Vintage. My name is Lily and today I wanted to share with you how I made something that I have wanted for a very long time. The Weasley Family Clock. That was, and I quote, completely useless if you wanted to tell the time, but otherwise very informative. End quote. Except mine? Well, mine will actually tell the time. So let's get to it. Now this clock is something that I have coveted ever since I saw it in the films. That film will always be magical to me. Seeing how they realized the wizarding world and the burrow for the first time was just... I like to think that this is something that's not uncommon to have in a wizarding household. So instead of making one exactly like the Weasleys, I wanted to make one that would suit the aesthetics of my own home. Materials I started with were a pack of 10 inch wooden discs, a clock parts kit found in most craft stores, which come with its own clock hands, but I got an additional set of clock hands that were a little bit more ornate, and some Mod Podge I had lying around. I loved the scrolly look of the Weasley clock around the outside, so I decided to stick to that design for the clock face, also because I am not a graphic designer and would do a pretty rubbish job if I tried to design one myself, let's be honest. After editing a clear version of the face, I mirrored the image and printed it out with my laser printer and cut it out. I have heard that this works with inkjet printers as well, but I haven't tried it out myself. I knew I wanted contrasting colors for the clock and the scrolls, so to prep the wood prior to transferring the image, I placed the image face down and traced the outline shape on the wood with a pencil. I then went and painted the wood a darker brown for the main face and a lighter, more yellow toned brown for the scrolls as close as I could to the outline. I then used a sponge brush to cover the entire image with Mod Podge, enough to saturate the image but not too much that I would get globs leaking out when I pressed it onto the wood. I then placed the image onto the wood and smoothed it all out. After letting it dry for a few hours, I went back and touched up the painted edges with my darker brown to ensure that I had a nice clean edge once the paper comes off. Once the image was completely dry the next day, I dampened the paper with some water and gently rubbed off the paper. And that reveals the image underneath. Make sure not to rub too hard or else it will take the image off along with the paper. I also found a small washcloth helpful to rub off the paper as well. Once that was done, there were still trace amounts of paper that made the image have kind of a frosted look. So to get rid of it, I made a bit of a wash with acrylic paint and water, so it was really quite thin, and brushed a thin layer of that over the entire surface of the clock. This ended up coloring whatever paper was left without altering the color or clarity of everything else. The wood discs I bought were very thin, so to make my clock a little bit more sturdy, I decided to use another disc that came in the pack and glued it together to my first disc, using a heavy stack of books to press them as they dried. While that was drying, I worked on what would frame our pretty little faces on our little portraits on the clock. This can be done with anything lightweight, like a sturdy cardstock, but I wanted it to be as precise as possible. So I turned to my 3D printer and printed out tiny ovals with scalloped edges around the outside and two extra clock hands. I only had yellow filament at the time, so I painted them after they were done printing. I also painted the hands that came in the clock kit that I bought a vintage gold color, that way they would all match. I printed out small photos of everyone that would be going on the clock. That would be yours truly, my dashing husband Jason, my goodest boy Benjamin, and our newest addition, his little sister Minerva. I printed these out with my regular printer, although they would be a lot sturdier if they were printed on something like photo paper, but I don't have a photo printer at home, so a regular printer will do just fine. In order to be able to glue them onto the frame, I placed tape along the back sides of all of the images, glued the photos into their little frames, and glued those frames onto the clock hands. I would go on the hour hand, Jason on the minute hand, and the cats on the second hand. 
Now I originally wanted to glue them onto the second hand at an angle just to make it a little bit more interesting, but because it caused the hand to be a little bit heavier and off balance, the second hand wouldn't be able to run, so I had to change it up and glue them in one straight line instead. Now that the glue was dry, it was time to paint the edges and back of the clock. Drill a hole in the center and attach the clock movement. First was a rubber washer at the base of the movement, then through the hole of the clock face, another washer and nut, then the hour hand, the minute hand, and lastly, the second hand. Pop in a AA battery and Vernon's your uncle. Now let's take a look at how it all turned out. I am over the moon with how this turned out. I can't believe it actually works. I love that it moves and it's functional and it will go perfectly on my wall, which will have other things. I have plans for this wall, just you wait. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me make my version of the Weasley Family Clock. If you did, feel free to subscribe for more vintage geeky crafty goodness. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all next time.